got 12 hours elapsed without some fresh acts of violence, and on the day I left the county, I was informed that 40 frames had been broken the preceding evening as usual, without resistance and without detection. Such was the state of that county, and such I have reason to believe it to be at the moment. But whilst those, these outrages may have, uh, must be admitted to exist to such an alarming extent, it cannot be denied that they have arisen from circumstances of the most unparalleled distress. The perseverance of these miserable men in their proceedings tends to prove that nothing but absolute want could have driven a large and once honest and industrious body of the people into the commission of excesses so hazardous to themselves, their families and the community. At the time to which I allude, the town and county were burdened with large detachments of the military. The police was in motion, the magistrates assembled, yet all these movements, civil and military, had led to nothing. Not a single instance had occurred of the apprehension of any real delinquent actually taken in the fact against whom there existed legal evidence sufficient for conviction. But the police, however useless, were by no means idle. Several notorious delinquents had been detected, men liable to conviction on the clearest evidence of the capital crime of poverty, men who had been notoriously guilty of lawfully begetting several children, whom, thanks to the times, they were, not, they were unable to maintain. Considerable injury had been done to the proprietors of the improved frames. These machines were to them an advantage, insomuch as they superseded the necessity of employing a number of workmen who were left in consequence to starve. By the adoption of one species of frame in particular, one man performed the work of many, and the superfluous labourers were thrown out of employment. Yet it is to be observed that the work thus executed was inferior in quality, not marketable at home and merely hurried over with a view to exportation. It was called, in the cards of the trade, by the name of spider work. The rejected workmen, in the blindness of their ignorance, instead of rejoicing at these improvements in art so beneficial to mankind, conceived themselves to be sacrificed to improvements in mechanism. In the foolishness of their hearts, they imagined that the maintenance and well-doing of the industrious poor were objects of greater consequence than the enrichment of a few individuals by any improvement in the implements of trade which threw the workmen out of employment and rendered the labourer unworthy of his hire. And it must be confessed that although the adoption of the enlarged machinery in that state of our commerce which the country once boasted might have been beneficial to the master without being detrimental to the servant, yet in the present situation of our manufacturers rotting in warehouses without a prospect of exportation, with the demand for work and workmen equally diminished, frames of this construction tend materially to aggravate the distresses and discontents of the disappointed sufferers. But the real cause of these distresses and consequent disturbances lies deeper. When we are told that these men are leagued together not only for the destruction of their own comfort, but for the very means of subsistence, can we forget that it is the bitter policy, the destructive warfare of the last 18 years, which has destroyed their comfort, your comfort, all men's comfort? These men never destroyed their looms till they would become useless, worse than useless, till they would become actual impediments to their own exertions in obtaining their daily bread. Can you then wonder that in times like these, when bankruptcy, convicted fraud, <coughs> felony are found in, the state, in a station not far beneath that of your lordships, the lowest, once most useful portion of people should forget their duty in their distresses and become only less guilty than one of their representatives. <laughs> While the exhorted offender can find means to battle the law, new capital punishments must be devised, new snares of death must be spread for the wretched mechanic who is banished into guilt. These men were willing to dig, but the spade was in other hands. They were not ashamed to beg, but there was no one to relieve them. Their own means of subsistence were cut off, all other employments preoccupied, and their excesses, however to be deplored and condemned, could hardly be the subject of surprise. Why were the military called out to be made a mockery of, if they were to be called out at all? As the sword is the worst argument that can be used, so should it be the last. 
in this instance it was the first, but providentially as of yet only in the scabbard. The present measure will indeed pluck it from the sheep. Yet had proper meetings be held in the earlier states of these riots, that the grievances of these men and their masters, for they also had their grievances, be fairly weighed and justly examined. I do think that means might have been devised to restore these workmen to their applications and the liquidity to the country. At present, the country suffers with a double infliction of an idle military and a starving population. All these have been, all of this has been transacted within 130 miles of London, and yet we have sat down to enjoy our, tri our foreign triumphs in the midst of domestic calamity. But all the cities you have taken, all the armies which have retreated before your leaders, are but paltry subjects of self-congratulation if your land divides against itself, if your dragoons and executioners must be let loose against your fellow citizens. You call these men a mob, desperate, dangerous and ignorant, and seem to think that the only way to be quiet, or to quiet the bellum matorum capitum, is to love up a few of its superfluous heads. But even a mob may be better reduced to reason by a mixture of consolation and firmness, and firmness than by additional irritation and redoubled penalties. Are you aware of our obligations to a mob? It is the mob that labour in your fields, that serve in your houses, that man your navy, that recruit your army, that have enabled you to defy all the world, and can, and can also defy you, when neglect and calamity have driven them to despair. You may call people a mob, but do not forget that a mob too often speaks the sentiments of the people. And what are your remedies? After months of inaction and months of action worse than inactivity, at length comes forth the grand specific, the never failing rostrum of state positions from the days of Draco to the present time. After feeling the pulse and shaking the head over the patient, prescribing the usual course of warm water and bleeding, and warm water and your mortgage advantage in this, when a proposal is made to emancipate or relieve, you hesitate. You deliberate for years. You temporize and tamper with the minds of men. But a death bill must be passed off hand without a thought of the consequences. Sure I am from what I've heard and from what I've seen that to pass the bill under all existing circumstances without inquiry, without deliberation, would only be to add injustice to irritation and barbarity to neglect. The framers of such a bill must be content to inherit the honours of the Athenian lawgiver, whose edicts were said to be written not in ink, but in blood. <coughs> but suppose it passed. Suppose one of these men, as I have seen them, meagre with famine, sullen with despair, careless of a life which your lordships are perhaps about to value as something less than a price of stock, stock and frame. Suppose this man, surrounded by those children for whom he is unable to procure bread at the hazard of his existence, about to be torn forever from a family which he lately supported in peaceful industry, and which it is not his fault he can no longer so support. Suppose this man, and there are 10,000 such for whom you may select your victims, dragged into court to be tried for this new offence, by this new law, still there are two things wanting to convict and condemn him. And these are, in my opinion, 12 butchers for a jury and a Jeffries for a judge. <laughs>